Hey guys, what's up? So we're gonna be looking at the 10 things to master for advanced JavaScript. So I've actually done a video like this in the past where uh, to be honest, I didn't feel like it was very good. I hope this will be a little bit better. I did think about it, but I didn't really like, I mean, this is coming from just a lot of experience of dealing with JavaScript, but like I, I didn't really like, you know, thoroughly analyze, you know, this should be like number one, this should be number 10 and all that shit. So if, uh, if I have this out of order in your opinion, uh, feel free to express your opinion and um, you know, just know that, you know, I try to number things and what I feel is important, but it may not be perfect. Uh, so these are 10 things that you want to master for advanced JavaScript. So I'm not going to actually tell you uh, how to solve all these problems, but I will tell you that some of the things that are addressed in this video, I do have t uh, tutorial videos on in case you're interested in learning from me, but there's also all kinds of other resources out there. So I never claim to have the best resources. Some people find me uh, to be really helpful and then other people probably don't. So uh, that said, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, so number 10, and this is, um, you know, a lot of people be like, it goes without saying number one, you should be using Chrome when you're doing development. If you're not using Chrome, at least be using Mozilla Firefox. Those are going to be the two best. They're going to save you a lot of time. Uh, if you're using internet Explorer, I don't really know what to tell you, but, um, the Chrome developer tools, it, it is absolutely, impo it's impossible for me to work in JavaScript without them. I use the console on a regular basis. Uh, the console is a great way for you to be able to execute your JavaScript code directly in the browser so you don't have to actually you know, open a uh, .html file or a .js file and have to set up everything, save your file, open it up in a browser. Your browser is already open. You can literally right click on any web page, go into your console, console and start writing some JavaScript code. So I'm sure most JavaScript developers know that, but you know that's where you should be testing your assertions. Okay, does this piece of code work or does this do that or do that? Um, in addition, when you outgrow that, you're going to find that the console gets a little bit annoying having to type everything in because it wants to execute all the time. So you might find that like JS Fiddle is a little bit better, uh, but it's still going to save you time over having to write the files. In addition, I'm not really mentioning in this list, but you should also know about the network panel, you know, how to inspect Ajax calls and stuff like that, because, you know, ultimately that is a hugely important thing whenever you're doing JavaScript. Um, also how to step through and debug your code uh, is another thing with Chrome DevTools. So it, it's an absolute must. I have it number 10 on this list, but it kind of goes without saying, but I, at the same point, I felt like it needed to be on this list. So I put it at number 10. But that should be the first place you start. How do I get better at Chrome DevTools in order to be able to step through my JavaScript and all that? The next is uh, number nine, the specification. A lot of people don't realize that the JavaScript or ECMAScript 2015 specification is available online. Anybody that wants to take a look at this, you guys can see the exact write-up of all the people that have been responsible for putting these standards together. So if you wanted to be on the bleeding edge of JavaScript, you want to be a master, you're going to go to the specification. You want to write a book in this stuff, you need to go to the specification. Um, if you're going to be working on like core.js, like this guy from Russia who created that project initially that is now included in Babel, to be able to polyfill the browsers, to be able to use some of the latest ECMAScript standards, which aren't actually implemented in all the browsers, you have to go to the specification. That's how these guys figure this stuff out. They, they go directly to the specification. Arguably, this should be higher on the list if you truly want to be a master of JavaScript. Also, you need to know that the name is JavaScript 6.0 because it's the sixth standard or it's the ECMAScript 2015. Technically, it's ECMAScript 2015 because 2015 was the year that they finalized everything. Next, you need to learn about object constructors. A lot of people don't know what object constructors are in JavaScript. They don't even know that JavaScript has constructors. Uh, we'll see in just a little bit um, you know, why some people might be confused behind that, but um, you know, n knowing how to actually implement a new JavaScript object via its constructor is important. Number seven is like Babel versus TypeScript, but you could also add CoffeeScript and all these other you know, pre-processing languages, even stuff like JSX. Like, what is all this stuff? Like, what are the differences? What is Babel trying to solve? What is TypeScript trying to solve? Uh, TypeScript is a is a, is a, a subset of JavaScript, so that it brings you features like uh, ECMAScript 6.0, and it also brings you features from ECMAScript 7.0, which isn't even close to being finalized. But it brings it to you now in the way that Microsoft sees fit. Microsoft owns the TypeScript project. Babel is owned by it's a more of an open source type of thing where it's community based, and, and TypeScript as well. But it's mostly you know catered uh, or, or directed by the you know the the, the Microsoft crowd over there, but um, TypeScript also aims to bring type safety to JavaScript. And not, not really type safety, but by means of uh, having to declare types and stuff like that, which is more familiar to Java developers and C-sharp developers. So they're aiming to bridge that gap. 
but Babel is bringing you all the same stuff. They allow you to write an ECMAScript 6.0, even though browsers don't support it. You use a Babel compiler, it'll compile all your code down to code that actually works in Edge and Internet Explorer 11 and, and Chrome and Firefox and everything else. So, you know, what are those two things? Make sure you truly understand those because a lot of people, you have conversations with them and it's clear that they have no idea what Babel is or what it's for uh, and they don't even know what TypeScript is either. Number six is closures. A lot of people don't understand closures, like how do inner functions have access to outer function parameters and, uh, you know, why aren't things in JavaScript lexically scoped? Um, certain things are addressed in order to, uh, you know, lexically scope uh, things, and that's some of the, you know, some of the, the things coming down the pike in the latest standards, but uh, people need to understand what closures are because it will create some, uh, you know, it creates some interesting ways of being able to accomplish certain problems, and some people just can't wrap their head around it. So, you know, make sure you thoroughly understand what's going on there. Number five is the global namespace. A lot of people don't understand what it means to pollute the global namespace. They don't understand what the window object is in JavaScript and why attaching things to it is a bad idea, especially if you have var x and you're just, you know, storing a number to uh, for some you know particular you know execution time you know they they pollute up the global namespace they have naming conflicts and clashes and it's just a terrible experience. Number four is the iffy and the modules like why do we have the iffy pattern why do we have modules in JavaScript why are libraries like jQuery using them um, you know this also goes back to the whole global namespace thing so you know iffies exist because you don't want to pollute the global namespace private functions only exists through modules and if he's or modules like the if he and, and the standard module pattern or the self-revealing module pattern um, you know that's how we actually restrict access to our to our classes and or not to our classes but to our objects and then furthermore in order to prevent things from being attached onto you know the global namespace we can declare one particular library like jQuery or something like that and then attach things to that and everything is embedded within the jQuery object and not attached to the global name Number three is prototypes. Like everything in JavaScript is object. Uh, JavaScript is actually an object-oriented language. A lot of people don't know that. They think it's like some sort of functional or procedural language. Um, JavaScript can be considered a functional language depending on who you ask. I mean, I think, you know, the pure academic definition of a functional language, JavaScript probably doesn't match that. But JavaScript allows you to pass functions around as first-class citizens. What does that mean? It means that you can pass a function around like it's a string or an int or an, a number. And it's not even called int in JavaScript. It's called a number. But you can pass those things around um, because of the fact that JavaScript is somewhat of a functional language. Uh, where other languages won't allow you to do that as easily. Uh, but with proto prototypes, everybody needs to know about prototypical inheritance. How does that use, how is that used for your benef benefit? Do you understand that JavaScript objects always uh, point back to some prototype? Do you know how to change their prototype? Uh, do you know how to prevent their prototype from being changed? Like, so a lot of different things uh, that you need to understand with prototypical inheritance, but it's ultimately the most powerful feature of, of you know, uh, be, uh, JavaScript being an object-oriented language. Number two is functions, and this probably could have been number three with uh, with prototypes being number two, but either way, they're both both very important things. A lot of people don't understand uh, that functions are first-class citizens and that they're passed around. Uh, they don't understand the difference between an anonymous function and a function that is that is named. Uh, they don't understand that you can. Um, that you know they don't understand that the term you know callback function and and how that is how that works and uh, they don't understand the asynchronous nature of JavaScript as well. So understanding functions callbacks uh, is an extremely important thing. And until you actually wrap your head around that, you're never going to be an advanced JavaScript developer. Number one is the this keyword and. Um, once again, I feel like the top three could be in any particular order, but a lot of people don't have any idea of this keyword. Uh, you know, they, they don't know why it exists or how it works. They don't understand why it changes. Uh, they don't understand why the bind feature or the bind function was created in order to prevent your, the, you know, to be able to bind your this to the context of which you were executing. They didn't understand why this sometimes points to the global namespace or sometimes it points to an object. Sometimes it points to an object when they think it should point to the object's prototype. There's all kinds of different confusion when it comes to the, this keyword and uh, it, it's, a, it's a very important concept in JavaScript. So there's probably other things that I'm missing on this list, but honestly, like when I sat down, I, I, I thought of this list in literally like 10 or 15 minutes, but this is after years of doing JavaScript and I just basically said, you know, right now, 
you know, there's tons that you can learn with JavaScript 6.0. There's tons that you can learn with Babel and TypeScript and all this other stuff. Um, and then there's, you know, the, the, the here now, this is what has, you know, bit people for literally a decade or more of, uh, of JavaScript development. So um, let me know what you guys think and uh, let me know. Uh, well, actually, please leave comments if you guys can think of anything that may have been left off of this list. I probably could have made it longer. Anyway, thanks, guys. Take care. Bye.